All right, uh, Travis Wayne Goodsell. I hope I gave enough time in the beginning here to do the video. And I hope the video does not shut off on me during the course of this viewing. Now what we're doing is going to my Stellarium and with the death threat given by President William Nelson of the Church of Jesus Christos de los Santos de los Dias uh, of Latter-day Saints, something like that. I don't know Spanish. No hablo español. So, uh, we need to check to see if it's going to happen within this week time frame, as I've been thinking it will be. <clears throat> so, oops, what are you doing? Get back up there. All right, so you'll notice Mercury, and it's almost to the top of the scales of judgment of Libra. Unfortunately, it's going to retrograde and go right back up into Venus. It's not ready to be <laughs> the judge yet, and so it's going to miss the election this year. Uh, it's not going to appear at the top until about the 22nd of November. Uh, and so these guys, Jupiter and Saturn, are still on the back doing the fighting. And uh, we need to go this way. See, up here is Venus. Venus was at Regulus. The King Star. Uh, for yesterday's conference. And so it's still there today. Uh, and so this is an interesting twist because Venus... Uh, is compatible with uh, uh, Babylon's Ishtar. I did the video the other day. And, uh, and so the symbol of Ishtar is the lion. And so there, es Esther is, was at Regulus in the lion constellation at the beginning of conference. As I was saying, there's falling stars and See if we can find the falling stars of Nelson. There's the moon. So yesterday also it was with Mars. And there's there's Mars. There's the moon. So it's at the eye of the beast, as Nelson gave the death threat. And there's Nelson. How do I know it was Nelson? Because when Monson died, Mars was at the top of Libra. So just as I told you that uh, Mercury uh, was at the top of Libra for the election in 2016, which I didn't tell you, but uh, that's why I was talking about Mercury missing the election this year and not showing up until around the 22nd of November. That's how I knew Mercury was Trump. And so this is how I knew also that Mars was Nelson. Because Monson dies, and there's other signs for him on that night, but Mars is right there at the top of Libra, the scales of judgment. And so I've been following him as he goes around, knowing the ancient uh, interpretations of the various constellations as uh, Mars is in each one with conjunctions so you'll notice there are asteroids meteor showers that are going on right with Nelson as well uh, these are falling stars guys falling stars surround Mars who is Nelson and then the moon, which is also a falling star, because it was at the tail of uh, Cetus. I'll put a little thing there so you can see where it was, because I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Uh, he was back here at the tail, 
uh, when it was a full moon. So it missed Mars. And uh, so that's why I'm kind of wondering about what will happen within the next week here, this upcoming week, to see if we can find anything that might give us a clue as to a day when Nelson's death threat will come to pass. So we'll first go one, one day. Uh, the moon is now entering Taurus. It's at the foot of Aries. Aries, 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 Aries. Mixing Ari Melber from MSNBC. Uh, Aries is the sacrificial ram. Let's click on the star that's right by it. Uh, if you remember the sacrifice of Isaac by Abraham, uh, a ram appeared with a messenger uh, telling Abraham he doesn't have to go through with it. Magically a ram appears and all safe. Well, turns out that that was a sign in the heavens for a specific date in the future unless the Bible was written around that time period. <laughs> Which it may have been. Uh, because the Jews didn't create the Masoretic text until 800 to 1000 AD CE for Common Era. And so uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls are the oldest known form of the Bible as they themselves are dated to the time period of around 4 AD. Uh, it goes back 200 or 100 BCE to 200, 100 AD CE. Um, but uh, yeah, right in that time period. Uh, so as no older form of biblical text can be found, uh, even though stories and legends and myths and oral traditions abound, um, the actual evidence for a previous document or documents, papyrus scrolls, does, doesn't exist. Uh, but uh, yeah, there was a sign in accordance with that Bible story. Uh, so it's still technically, the moon is still technically in Aries. Uh, so this is the fifth, that's tomorrow. So that is a possibility. Uh, let's check going ahead to see what the other others are doing. Uh, so yeah, Mercury is going to be hovering around the feet. And Venus is still in Leo. And Jupiter and Saturn are still on the back of the beat, or the, the Centurion. Is that right, Centurion? Or is that Battlestar Galactica's <laughs> cyborgs? robot creatures. If you've never seen the reboot of Battlestar Galactica, and especially the spin-off pre-series of Capri uh, Caprica, uh, you're missing out. Uh, it is pretty intense, uh, but uh, the Caprica especially, um, but uh, well worth watching it if you're a fan of the theology of Battlestar Galactica from the mind of the Mormon. All right, so yeah, this is a potential here because today it's entering it, but it's at the eye and this is the death threat day. And so here tomorrow is, it's still in Aries. So I hope nothing happens. I hope he's a good guy as one of the Mormons attacked me with and bore testimony that Nelson has all the keys, despite my confirming he doesn't. He can't get Israel right and had to still consult with Hebrew scholars. And so what in the world is she giving testimony of? And, and, and it just becomes a lie. And so she's bearing false witness. You gotta stop it, Mormons, because that's all she was doing. 
She was bearing false witness. She was trying to gaslight me, trying to be a denier of the truth. So, all right, let's keep going forward to the ninth to see if there's any other potential situation other than tomorrow. Okay, moon's there, and I'm pretty sure Venus doesn't move much. Yeah, Venus doesn't seem to move much at all here. And there's the ninth. Okay, so yeah, if anything's going to happen, it'll be because of the moon. And so let's get the moon front and center here. Uh, so tomorrow it's at the rear end, uh, hind legs of the the sacrificial uh, uh, ram, and then uh, it's in Tora, Tora, Taurus, right there at the throat. That's where you cut the throat of the animal for the sacrifice. So that's another option. And then right between the horns of Taurus which if you understand the Egyptian concept of the Apis bull, uh, the Apis bulls often would be uh, shown and even decorated with a solar disk between their horns. Uh, the moon is a, a netherworld solar disk. It's the sun of the night sky, the, the netherworld, <coughs> and represents religion. Uh, and so, uh, again, we have a, a third potential day here, according to the symbolisms. The first was tomorrow at the hind legs, then uh, the sixth at the throat of the bull, and then uh, the seventh between the horns, and then the eighth at the tip of the horn, and also, notice it's now uh, in between the horn of Orion. I know they call it an hourglass with the star down here, but it's too, uh, it's not bright enough. And, and so whenever I see Orion, I see it as a horn, and it always seems to be giving a message. And uh, in scriptures, we often see, and the third trumpet blew, and the messenger blew its trumpet. And so this, uh, oh, look at this. We have Orion. When did that appear? I wasn't paying attention to that. We have a meteor shower, uh, falling stars, as the moon is uh, in the horn, giving a message of Orion. Uh, that's interesting. Um, let me, yeah, okay, so it's on the 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th, and okay, so it's been around. It looks like it's fading on the 3rd here. Yeah, it showed up on the 3rd. Isn't that interesting? Okay, wow. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, we need to pay attention to this in symbolism here. Uh, this is a key feature of symbolism interpretation. Wow, because it's right between the horn of Orion there, and it's called the Orionids. Uh, wow, okay, so, wow. So we now have another sign on the 8th, which is Thursday. Wow, okay, and then the last day of Sukkot, Sukkot, it's at the crotch of the the one kid, Gemini, 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 um, wow, 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 okay, so it looks like everything will be completed by the 9th. My goodness. So at the 8th, a trumpet is blown for the destruction. Uh, so let's now go to me and we'll go to scriptures to see if we can find 
uh, something in scriptures that indicates a trumpet blowing or a messenger in heaven uh, blowing a trumpet, uh, giving a warning message of destruction. Uh, it appears that it did record. Still have to put it on the movie maker to see if it did. Uh, so what key words we're going to look for in scriptures are uh, Trump. Uh, it could be sounded, could be blown. Uh, let's see, there's 160 found. A lot of them in Exodus, of course. So we're going to look for Revelation and Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, here's Revelation. Uh, voice of a trumpet. Four trumpets. Eight. Okay, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour, and I saw the seventh angel, which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Uh, if you didn't know, the earthquake we had involved trumpets announcing things. I did that video talking about magna being equal to strong, and, or meaning strong, and strong in Hebrew is Gaber, which the god Gaber is the strong one, and Gabriel, the one who announced the Christ on multiple occasions. Okay. I'm going to smoke the incense and then it's going to return. So I wonder if eight. Okay, seven trumpets. Okay, wait, here we go. Uh, verse five in Revelation eight. The angel took the censer. And this is at the temple. That's where the censer is. It's a little incense thing that you shake around. If you've ever been to a Catholic mass, uh, the the priest will come in uh, waving the censer as he goes up to the pulpit uh, and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it to the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake okay and seven angels prepared themselves to sound the first angel sounded and there were followed hail and fire mingled with blood that were cast upon the earth okay we got falling stars and falling hail uh, third part of the trees were burnt up bye-bye okay. west coast and all the green grass was burnt up the second angel sounded and it was as if it were a great mountain burning with fire it was cast into the sea uh, again, a falling star. Third part of the creatures died. Um, called it wormwood. Fourth angel sounded. Third part of the sun was smitten. Okay, that's already happened. That's the first of day, th the three days of darkness. So interesting. Revelation does talk about the three days of darkness. And the third part of the moon three lunar eclipses apparently those I think have all happened if I remember the counting Monson died within the time frame of one of the darkening moons moon turns to blood it was a super blood blue wolf total lunar eclipse it was intense uh, third part of the stars that's a common theme third part uh, tail of the dragon stars fall from the tail of the dragon or the uh, the uh, quadranted meteor showers are were the one sign at Monson's death uh, and they're the third largest uh, meteor showers of the year 
Uh, a third of them were darkened. Okay, so flying in, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The reason of the other trumpet of the three angels, which yet to sound. So let's get to those other trumpets. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Four angels were loose. Slay the third part of men. Well, that sounds a lot like uh, virus. A uh, number of horsemen, a vision of respite of fire. Okay, so let's go into Revelation 9. It does not talk about the other soundings. Huh which are yet to sound. So there's three trumpets to be blown, but it doesn't go into them. How many, there were, there are seven trumpets, and so five, six, and seven. Fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, key to the bottomless pit. And I think we witnessed that. And then the sixth, and then, okay, where's the seventh then? And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow upon his head, and his face as it were the sun, and his feet as a pillar of fire. Interesting. I wonder if that's the sign of the Orionids. When the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Seal up those things. Write them not. <sighs> but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Temple. That's what mystery of God is. It's often referred to as mysteries of God. It's the initiatory. When a an initiate goes through the temple rituals. Uh, this was coronation events for the Egyptians and uh, how you become a Christ as Mormons are clueless about. And the voice I heard from heaven spake again. A little book, take it out and read it. And the book was bitter. Now this is interesting because it does seem to correspond with Lehi. He, in the first year of the reign of King Zedekiah, who was the puppet king of Babylon, put on the throne of Judah. The sign in the heaven is seen by Lehi. But before that, he sees a, and has another dream where he's given, he's also given a book. Let's go to the Book of Mormon, because that may be telling us what we need to know. And here's 11 where he talks about the building of the temple. So yes, this does seem to correspond with what we're looking for. So let's go to the Book of Mormon again. First Nephi, chapter 1. Okay. Uh, it came to pass, he prayed, pillar of fire, dwelt upon a rock, heard much, quick, trembled, uh, returned into his house, and overcome with the spirit. Oh. 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 Okay, so no book in the first one. Alright, so yeah, the book is in the second one, which is the date that John gives in Revelation chapter 12 of uh, Jupiter being the Christ who is a man to be born as I've gone over numerous times, but nobody seems to comprehend the learning of the Jews. As the 
Book of Mormon clearly sets forth in the beginning. We are going over the learning of the Jews. We're not going over Christianity or Hindu or Islam. The learning of the Jews. So the concept of the Christ is after the learning of the Jews, Mormons. Uh, and so the twelve others following are in Leo the Lion, thus Babylon, and thus the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, of whom the Christ will come out of, according to Joseph Smith, in section 103, verse 16, will come out of Babylon, the great and abominable church, which must fall. That's what we're, we were looking for, is the date of the fall, when Nelson says he gave us a death threat. Uh, and stood before my father and gave unto him a book, Yes, woe unto Jerusalem, for I have seen thine abominations. Yea, and many things I see, and yeah, Jerusalem will be destroyed. So that does seem to be it. We're at the seventh trumpet, and the seventh trumpet is going to be blowing on Thursday. So, as I showed, there were other signs leading up to it. So any day could symbolically correspond to any kind of destruction, but uh, Thursday is the trumpet blowing and does correspond with 1st Nephi. And if you're confused, why is 1st Nephi related to Revelation? Well, you've not read your Book of Mormon. When Nephi has his father's dream of the Tree of Life, Nephi gets added information which comes from Revelation. And Nephi is told, don't write it, I've already told John to write it. And it calls him by name. His name is John. He will write about the end of the world. And so concerning the destruction of Jerusalem. And it's not Jerusalem. You need to understand this. The Gospel says, oh, it's going to be Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Well, what about Moses? Moses is all about Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Why is it Jerusalem and not Egypt? But then it's not Egypt or Jerusalem either. Because they're both prophetic stories. Because the sign of the three days of darkness, the two outer ones, those occur over the United States of America and cross in southern Illinois on 2024. The first year when Trump took office and the Senate Intelligence Committee came out with Volume 5 not too long ago saying yes Putin put Trump on the throne. Trump is Putin's puppet and in the first year of the reign of King Trump the puppet king of Putin came the sign of the Son of Man and the beginning of the battle in the first day of darkness on the 21st of August 2017 Monson's birthday and the ancient Egyptian religious New Year. And so, this is why the Book of Mormon was written. So, don't go thinking it's all some prophetic book of. Uh, no. Canon Dagua for Joseph Smith Sr and Captain William Morgan Anti-Mason. It's under uh, William Morgan Anti-Mason in Wikipedia. Look for Canandaigua. They were there together in Canandaigua. William Morgan came to Joseph Smith's lodge. They were fellow York Wright's brothers. Remember the Brethren Adieu? That's from the mystic tie of the Scottish Rites. Well, if Joseph Sr. is a Master Mason at the Lodge in Canandaigua of the York Rides, why then do they have Scottish Rides in the Book of Mormon 
And it's also Jacob who's the one doing the talking. Jacob means usurper. Huh. Sure, it has nothing to do with the Illuminati and the threat to put a monarch on the throne of America. Of course it does. And so it's not Jews, it's not Jerusalem, it's Mormons, it's the United States of America, it's Americans, it's Mormons. You have to distinguish whether they're talking about the religion or the nation. Doctrine and Covenants, section 1, verse 16, it's the religion. Alrighty. And so, yeah, here we see manifesting plainly of the coming of a Messiah. What's a Messiah? I have never heard that word before. You've not heard of Christ. No, they're the same. Messiah is the Hebrew version because remember, this is the learning of the Jews. There is not supposed to be a Christ in here. It's Jewish. So if ever you see a Christ in the text, erase it and put Messiah. So it means the same thing. Greek is the, or Christ is the Greek version of Messiah, which means the anointed one. And Joseph Smith calls him Mormon. 103.16 Because he comes out of the corrupt church. Just like Jacob did. Or the Israel. The descendant of Israel. To come out of Jacob, the usurper. All ties together. And the Smiths knew all about it. Because remember, this was the replacement of the 116 pages that Martin Harris was a little too uncomfortable with as he was an anti-Mason in Palmyra, the committee in Palmyra of anti-Masons. And so when you see this, and you see the Freemasonry connections here, then you realize, oh, well, Martin Harris was an anti-Mason, and apparently he didn't catch on to it, as you guys did neither. Which was why it was written the way it was written, or rewritten the way it was rewritten. So that Martin Harris would not be uncomfortable with the information given. So, alright. So the sign for destruction appears to be Thursday. But any day before that could also work as well. Could be multiple days. I just hope you guys survive. I hope we all survive. I don't wish death upon you. I'm trying to warn you. Because Nelson chose to give you a death threat instead. Chose not to give you a specific warning. Amos 3.7. He was supposed to give you a specific warning. Hey, I see trouble coming. We've built this tower to see the enemy coming. I am a seer, a prophet, a revelator, and I see danger coming. And he failed you. They talked about generally talking about it, and that you're just supposed to understand and be prepared for whatever. Not knowing when, as decades have passed with nothing going on. Then all of a sudden, here we are, the end of the world, as prophesied, in our name title, Latter-day Saints. And he's silent, giving you death threats, victim-blaming you, financially victim-blaming you, giving you false information, being clueless that he's supposed to be the Prince of God in the seat of Moses, the office of Moses. He failed you. And so I'm stepping up to make sure you're safe as best as anybody will listen to me. I've been doing this 
since I found out about the sign in the head, uh, sign of uh, the solar eclipse. Way back in November 2016, it was announced on Fox 13 News. Each and every single time, I was trying to figure out the date for this. And, and obviously, I, it was a learning process for me. As I'm being taught what I had been generally taught and made aware of, and had noticed a few fun things with lunar eclipses and deaths of prophets, Faust, Hinckley, and the Tetrad boys. But uh, when the solar eclipse was announced, I went, holy crap, this is it. Stopped my Paleo-Hebrew work, finished off the script uh, for Paleo-Hebrew, got that published as quick as I could, and then uh, went full on, let's deal with Armageddon here. And Mormons have hated me, they've shunned me, wanted me dead. <sighs> Fulfilling biblical prophecy. Fulfilling Mormon prophecy in the scriptures. So, uh, come with me if you want to live. Says Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator, in the Terminator movies. John Connor, or not John Connors, um, what was his name? Can't remember his name. He died <laughs> after having sex with Sarah Connors. Um, but uh, yeah, come with me if you want to live. See, I'm not doing this for gain like Nelson is. Nelson's not even doing it, he just wants gain. Notice how many times. Go back. Listen to conference. The whole thing. Listen to it. Find all of the connections that they told you about that involve you paying money. Whether it be the LDS charities where people have to donate to it in order for LDS charities to work. And especially temples all the times and they talked about you need to be worthy for the temple well what's answer, question number 10 Mormons had the one guy talk about oh yeah you should renew your temple recommend you should go back anyway whether you need it renewed or not and reaffirm your commitment to God God doesn't need your money neither does the church really just for Enzyme Peak Associates alone, they get seven billion dollars a year in interest from our tithing all these decades. They do not need our money, and yet they keep asking for more. Please, sir, can I have some more? That's that's supposed to be us asking for more. Not Scrooge. So, uh, be safe, be prepared. Uh, it may be already too late, but again, this is it. This is ten virgins time. This is the flood time. This is the day of burning time. This is it. The falling stars. They were all out, so I knew something was up. And so when nothing happened yesterday, I was kind of wondering, okay, well, then when? Okay, well, suck it is, is seven days, so we have until Friday. And so then I, after the death threat, I thought, okay, let's check. So there you go. And deny or disbelieve at your own risk. But uh, Trump went down. That means Putin betrayed him <laughs> for the sole purpose of causing the chaos in America. See, Putin has all all knowing. He orchestrates it all. He does it in multiple waves and multiple outlets. He doesn't just do one thing and hope it works. No, he sends out waves of different tactics and different techniques and different attacks. 
and uh, tries to get all of them to succeed if possible, but if one fails, he's got the others to back it up. That's how he works. And Trump was his puppet. And Trump has gone down. So whether Trump survives or not, that's another question. But uh, Utah is toast. So the question is, how will it be toast? And will it be by Thursday? Or on Thursday? I wouldn't bet against me. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a sad day. I mean, I cried with the windstorm with the one lady who was lost in the mountains. I don't think she's ever been found. I mean, that was sad. I mean, just to know how she was feeling during that time. To be caught in the mountains during the storm and realizing she's not been found to this date. She hasn't gotten out, which means she died. And that, that's just heart wrenching. The fear she must have felt, and the helplessness, and the pain. My God, please. Please listen to me. Don't keep listening to him who gave you a death threat. He's not in your best interest. He does not love you. He does not care about you. He has been neglecting you. Holland talked about the coronavirus. And instead of doing something, he then turned it on you. They are the ones that helped cause it by slowly shutting down the church rather than immediately when the health officials told us to. They didn't listen and Nelson's a medical doctor. And now we're suffering the consequences of the church's leadership. What Holland was talking about was his fault. All of their faults. Don't forget that. Don't let them divert you into blaming something else. 